studio. I am Wolf today alone because of some unforeseen circumstances. The Caldor will most likely be joining me a little bit later, but for now, I am alone. Brings back memories. Casting alone the GSL with you guys back from the Super Tournament here in the Mokdong studio. So thank you guys and welcome. Still got my uh, DT co-casters. I don't really feel alone. First up, we've got Boxer against Teja. So this is going to be a pretty exciting match. Teja, obviously on an entirely uh, higher level than Boxer right now, but Boxer has been improving quite steadily. I have to say, when Boxer first switched over to StarCraft 2, at first I was initially impressed. I was like, wow, you know, he made it quite far, but he played mostly Terran versus Terrans, and later he fell all the way out of the GSL, re-qualified, and since then I've watched his play at MLGs, I've watched his play in all of the GSL. It's been quite awesome. By the way, guys, go and go to the link below and do the winner prediction so you can predict who is going to get out of this group. It's a pretty stacked group. We've got six players in this group, more than the group yesterday. So we're going to have actually a total of 15 games. So <laughs> I'm hoping that Kaldor and or Moltrap show up pretty soon so that <laughs> I'll cast 15 games alone. I can do it. It would be like running a casting marathon. It's entirely possible. But uh, either way, they're going to show up pretty soon. We're going to take a look at yesterday's match results. So look at that, there you go, you can see it. Zenio and Inca both advancing, Zenio advancing 3-1, Inca 2-2, but Inca was able to defeat both Polt and Lucero with Dark Templar strategy, so he was able to advance yesterday. Very unusual to see these two players get out over favorites Polt and Lucera. Virus, I don't think anyone really expected him to, to necessarily get out, but he ended up getting fifth place in the group. Kind of playing a few unlucky games against some of his opponents, some weird strategies coming out of Virus as well. So Zenio and Inca advancing from the group. Of course, today's matches, like I was mentioning, we have six players. They're going to be FXO, ASD, MVP, Genius, Slayers, Boxer, the Emperor himself, Star Tails, Squirtle, hit, trying to get back into Code S, OGS, Cezanne, and Slayers, Teja, to round out the group. So that is Group D. That's today's matches. First up, we've got Slayers, Boxer against Teja. And as I was discussing just moments before, I really think Teja is the favorite to get out of this group for sure, and definitely to take out Boxer. As far as the other players go, it's hard to say. You know, ASD has actually been doing quite well recently. Squirtle, he's kind of like the dark horse of the group. He's actually been improving quite a bit. I've seen a lot of his play outside of the GSL recently. I've watched a lot of his replays, and I'm like, you know, this guy actually could be back. He might be able to get back into Kodas. It's hard to say, but he very well might be able to. So right now we've got Boxer versus Teja, as I was saying. And, of course, Teja, a student of Boxer, knows his strategies in and out, I'm sure. Boxer probably prepared something very sneaky, very specific for today's match. And I have to say, I'm pretty excited to see what that is. We've seen Boxer do all sorts of crazy strategies, like his Reaper TBT build, for example. And he did end up losing to Marine King Prime 2-1. That's how he's here in the up and down match. That's as far as he got. And Teja, on the other hand, lost to Dongre Gu, the Terran killer himself, 2-1 as well. So you guys can see how far they made it, both going to the round three of Code A. Our map is going to be Antigua Shipyard without gold bases, the special GSL version of Antigua Shipyard. Let's we'll see what these players pull out of their hats. What strategies will we see from Slayer's Boxer and his student Teja, formerly of the team Zenex? Find out in just a few moments here at the GSL. This is the up and down matches. I am Wolf. See you guys in the game. Judgment Day is finally arrived. This is for the ones who barely survive. We're not afraid to stand for what's right. As heaven really isn't going down without a fight. These are words. This our song. We are one another. I rely on you, my brother. We take this vow to show the world how. All right, down here at the bottom left. He is the Emperor, a Brood War player, a StarCraft II player, a coach, a leader of a team. He is... Slayers, Bucks. So awesome, he gets little apostrophes next to the Boxer in his name. A student of Boxer, a member of the team Slayers, this guy is... Slayers Teja. Slayers Teja. Quite a few fans here for Teja. I would say about the similar ratio of Teja to Boxer. I guess if you're a Boxer fan, you have to be a fan of Teja in some regard. 
He is a student of Boxer, after all. Now I wanted to mention, you guys can check out the yearly premium or premium plus tickets to gomtv.net slash ticket. And Boxer immediately here going for gas first and putting his first barracks on the low ground. So an unusual placement for the first barracks in this matchup. We'll see what Boxer's got in mind. But these positions, any sort of reaper build that you may have in mind is not going to be as effective. Of course, I'm saying that from the thought, the mindset that it could be a one base reaper all in. Excuse me. I had to take a drink of my hot water because I had something in my throat. A boxer is known for his reaper builds, especially in this matchup. So we'll see what he's got planned. Of course, with cross positions being the case here, it's not going to be as effective if he does go for a build like that. Although normally when Boxer does a build like that, he puts his first barracks not at his natural, but very close to his opponent, or at least somewhere in the middle of the map, so the rush distance would be much closer. We'll see what Boxer's got planned here. Will he make a factory immediately as barracks is done? And indeed, starts a factory in his main base, so no Reaper strategy plan. You're not necessary to go gas first to do a Reaper build anyways. And the SCB scouts into the main, sees the barracks, did not see the factory, however, so he's going to want to check and see if there's a tech lab going down. Sees that that is not the case. And of course, Teja, he knows his instructor well. He knows a boxer likes to do sneaky builds. He's got to be very careful. He wants to scout everywhere. Unfortunately, though, still was not able to see the factory. He was, however, able to see the gas, so he knows most likely this is not going to be some sort of crazy multiple barracks all in off of one base. It's going to be something with the factory. He just does not yet know what that is going to be. And nor do we. The factory finishing up for Boxer. Tech Lab started immediately. Actually, no, a reactor started for Boxer. So he's going to be going Reactor Hellions by the looks of things. Barracks coming back. He may even use that reactor for the barracks. Meanwhile, in Tage's base, he's actually sending his barracks to make his own reactor. So we're going to see two players going Reactor Hellions here by the looks of things. Very interesting to see how this turns out. Command Center does go down for Boxer, and an SCV spots it. So Tejan now knows, okay, this is not a super aggressive one base all in. I see that you've made a command center. This he does retreat now. Teja has walled himself off, so Hellions are not going to be very effective at getting into his main base. Smart choice. Whereas Boxer, on the other hand, is not walled off the front. Teja not going to be going for Reactor Hellions, however, using his Reactor for his barracks as he makes a tech lab on his factory. Looks like he's going to be going for Banshees. As you guys can see the starboard finishing up there. Tage's STV has returned home. Now Boxer not having a ton of defense for Banshees just yet as Starport finishing up right now. He's not going to have a Viking immediately, but he should have a Viking out by the time the Banshee gets there. And look who's here. You guys can't see him, but he is my knight without hair. He is Kaldor. Hey guys. Is your mic on? I have no idea. I don't think your mic's on just yet, but Kaldor is here. His mic will be on shortly. All right, okay. now he's awesome. back. All right, so now I am not alone. Welcome, Kaldor. Yeah, hey. So, uh, uh, what you have missed so far is that Boxer's gone gas first into making a reactor for his Hellions, and he's made a command center as well. So he's doing an unusual expansion build. On the other hand, Teja, making his command center just now, a little bit later, is going for Banshees. Okay, great. Yeah, awesome. I was just about to leave the Gome house in order to uh, go to the studio and watch some of the games, and suddenly Todd turns around and is like, are you supposed to cast today? And I'm, no, I'm not. Why? Ah, Wolf is all alone. And he thinks he hopes that someone of you appears soon. I was like, oh my god. And I started running. I'm like, shit. Yeah. Well, welcome. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad I'm able to cast Boxer. Yeah, you're pretty lucky. Well, the first Banshee is going towards Boxer's natural right now. He does have a few SCBs there. He's hidden his Hellions so far. Tage is not really aware of what strategy Boxer is doing. He's only seen the command center. Boxer does have one Viking in his main, a Raven about to pop out. That's going to be quite useful if Cloak is researched later, but right now that's not the case. Banshee getting one kill, two kills. And third kill there, but the Viking will clean that Banshee up very quickly. Just a few more SCP kills there. The worker count, 29 for Tage, the 28 for Boxer. But Boxer, of course, having two Commanders, double mules. Saved a lot of skins, but now he has a Raven out. He can drop all those mules. Yeah, both plays now with the expansion and the mule count. You just uh, you the harvester count is about even as you already mentioned. So yeah, eight minutes into the game. Let's see what Boxer has up his sleeve. We shall see. Um, I'm kind of curious about this build that Boxer's done. He's made quite a large amount of Hellions, but he has not used them just yet. 
he had a timing where he could have done some damage earlier, but now two Siege Tanks are out for Tasia. His Siege Mode is just now being started, but Siege Tanks alone, with the Raven as well, with the auto turret ability, should be able to deter any push the Boxer may have tried to make. And Boxer actually not even controlling the Watchtower right now, so a little bit surprising considering that he got those early Hellions out. Looks like he's going to send one Hellion to the Watchtower now. Nope, actually, well, he sent it past the Watchtower, decided to keep it. Boxer making a lot of Vikings right now and adding two factories, so he's definitely going to mech-oriented play here. We have Blue Flame coming up for Boxer now as well, though those Hellions will definitely pose a threat to Teja. Boxer's able to sneak them into the base. Does he have a start for it so he can go for a drop play? Or Yes, he does. Got the Raven out earlier, so obviously he has a start for it. Yeah, and right now, Looks like Teja adding another barracks. He's going to put him up to just two barracks. He's got siege tanks out, and his siege mode is about to finish. That does allow him to be a little bit aggressive if he chooses to. But it looks like he's going to sit back at home, hold his expansion. The problem is Boxer's had his expansion up for much longer, and is going into more factory-oriented plays and have three factories up and running very soon. And that's not something that Teja's going to want to deal with as he goes Marine tank. Blue flame out, the Marines are not going to be very effective. Boxer doesn't build a single tank, does he? He's completely relying on this play with the Vikings that you already mentioned, a significant amount of them, and the Blue Flame Hellions. I mean, a couple of patches ago, we've seen that Blue Flame Hellions are basically countering everything, huh. just to exaggerate a little bit on it. But with the recent changes, they are still common, but not in such huge numbers. I mean, he has like 12 of them already, he's getting yeah. additional three, so that will put him to 15 Blue Flame Hellions at the 11 minute mark. Yeah, he's just now starting his first siege tank. The tank count for Teja is five right now. The Viking count is five for Boxer to two to Teja. So he is going to have that Viking advantage. It's going to give him a vision advantage despite having a lower siege tank count. But I really like the army of Boxer. He's going to be able to control the middle of the map with it. He actually has taken that watchtower. He's actually got Hellions on both sides of it as well. So nothing will escape his notice. He can actually take a third base very soon. In fact, he's already got an SCV position ready to take that third base. And there it is. Starts it smart by Boxer. Starting an armory now as well to get the those upgrades for his mech units. And we have Teja with a bunch of uh, bio upgrades right now. He's going not only for Stim, but adding combat shield and plus one. So also really upgrade heavy by Teja from that point in time. So both of the players decide to get a little bit more upgrades. It walks up with a third base that Wolf already mentioned. The harvest account is uh, still even. And so far we didn't have all too many big engagements, did we? No. 300 resources lost for both players. Somehow an SCV for Teja actually escapes both Hellions' notices, and he nice Boxer actually pulls just a few Hellions to deny that scouting. It was very close. Teja almost was able to get a good glimpse at his composition. And that's one thing I'd like to note about both of these players right now is they're both playing extremely blind. Neither player really scouting the opponent's composition very well, so it's very difficult for both players to make a decision on when to move out and how to do it because they're very unaware of what their opponent's compositions are. That move with the Hellions was just so smart, hiding most of them, and uh, the only thing that Teja is aware of now is that his opponent has Blue Flame. And I think he might even have missed that one because he had to uh, watch the SUV very, very closely in order to see that. Very true indeed. The Boxer's third base is up. He's making into an orbital, dropping a ton of mules there. His gases have finished there as well. And his economy is going to be much better than Tejas, who's just now finishing up his command. So he hasn't even moved it. And if Boxer wants to, he can actually, with good positioning and Viking control, deny that third base for quite some time. He's not in position to kill the rocks just yet and open to, uh, in order to open a new path to that third base. And now Teja is moving out and he has a fair amount of Marines, as you can see, 29 of them. So those blue flame Hellions, if used properly, will pose a huge threat to Teja's army. Yeah, he does have a decent amount of Marauders in here as well, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. And Teja is like, oh my god, I have to get out of here. Yeah, he gets out of there so fast, seeing that many blue flame Hellions, not bringing his tanks with him. A little bit of a mistake. Teja just trying to be aggressive with that push, take the Watchtower. Something he hasn't really been able to hold this entire game. It looks like he is going to bring his tanks now and move out. The tank count now at actually 8 for Slayer's Boxer to just 5 of Teja because he has so many factories. He's got a total of 3 factories in his main base, pumping out whatever units he wants. 2 tanks at a time now is, of course, going to get ahead in tank production. We have Teja now with the first medivacs as well. He's adding more upgrades. He's adding a lot more mar marauders now than he realizes that his opponent is going for heavy mech with a lot of blue flame hellions. He just realized that marines probably won't cut in in the long run. He has to use a bunch of additional marauders to take down the, uh, the hellions first. But Boxer has like 26 of them already. That is huge. Yeah, that is quite huge. One thing to note is that the Viking count is actually better for Teja right now. 
and they're both making two Vikings at a time, so that's going to be really useful. Without the Viking superiority, he's not going to really be able to use his tanks as efficiently as he wants to, but he just has so many of them, it may be negligible. Oh, looks like Cage is actually going to take the center here. Looks like he's moving up there. Boxer is sieging up now. Cage immediately retreating. It's the battle for positions right now. Very true. And Boxer able to construct a sensor tower in the middle of the map. Knows exactly which angle his opponent's going to approach from, even if he doesn't hold the watchtower at that moment. And that tower is so important. He knows every single unit that Teja is trying to sneak by. Battle in the middle of the map between the Vikings and we have the point defense drone in favor of Teja in the first few seconds of the fight but Boxer using point defense on his own and this is a pretty close fight but Boxer is coming out ahead of it he's yeah, able to take so. down the Vikings of his opponent takes out his opponent's Vikings and cleans up a few of the units from the flank Teja taking a lot of hits here now gonna lose some of his meta bags oh this is huge Teja can't not afford to lose them right now he already stimmed on all his bio units and they're down 10 health and now he's sieging up in yes in range of this opponent's tanks taking out two of them i guess yeah here we go yeah even getting a meta back there right now the tank count more than double for boxer 13 tanks to five there are 22 marauders in the mix but it's just going to take them so long to close the distance i'm not sure if tate is ever going to really be able to break this boxer with a strong foothold on this game and he has the air uh, right now he has those vikings in the air and he's uncontested for the time being so he can use the vision the Vikings give him to make perfect use of all his tanks. He's getting the plus to attack upgrade right now. Teja moving in, trying to flank those tanks. He'll probably be able to take down all of them, but losing a huge amount of units thanks to the Hellions and the tanks at the top. Oh man, Teja losing all of his Vikings a second time as well. Boxer now 50 supply ahead. He's actually just going to rush down the final tanks of Teja. Is plus two for his vehicles about to finish. <laughs> and Teja in a lot of trouble losing so many units here. His units cannot even fully retreat. He's losing so much stuff right now. 136 supply left for Teja. And Boxer is pulling so far ahead. He's about to finish his plus two attack upgrade for Siege Tanks and Hellions. And is now just moving in. Tries to finish what he started. The last few remaining by units of Teja should not be enough to hold that push. Boxer in a superior lead. Very true. The one thing Tage has got going for him now is he does have that air advantage. If he uses it at this very moment and takes control of the air, that will help him out a lot because if he doesn't, hold that thought some Marauders actually to try to deny Boxer's middle base here. But if Tage does not take control of the air very quickly, Boxer's suddenly going to be sieging up his main base. He's going to be able to ferry units if he wants to later. But of course, since he's going for mech, that's probably not going to be his plan. He's probably just going to try to slowly edge his Hellions and tanks forward until he can kill Tage's third base. And Boxer is right now the only one who is still producing Vikings. Teja doesn't get any additional Vikings, he's just now getting plus two, plus two, and trying to get medivacs instead yeah. of Vikings to heal his army. And, uh, and one, on one hand, that's smart because his army is getting very low on hit points, but on the other hand, his medivacs are going to be so easily killed if he does not have the air superiority. And Boxer even making an additional starport for safety here, so patiently moving his tanks forward, and Teja is in a tough spot. Boxer with a fourth in the middle of the map right now. Another engagement by those two players. Teja trying his best to kill Boxer's army, but there is just way too much stuff. Those siege tanks in the back are doing so much damage, and Teja just can't engage. Absolutely not. Teja actually stimming, running forward here, but there are enough siege tanks and Hellions to buffer. Teja losing so much supply here. He's lost control of the center of the map as well. The one thing he's got going for him, though, is now he's got air control of this particular area. Boxer, though, is pushing turrets forward. This is not looking good for Tage. It looks like he's going to try to go for a siege drop here with the Marauders. There are not all that many Vike uh, Hellions left, so he might be able to drop. He's trying to drop into the middle of those tanks, but more and more tanks join the party, and Slayer's Boxer has only half of them sieged. That's so smart. The other half can take out any dropped units. Very true. And a little drop trying to assault Slayer's Boxer's center base right now was deflected. And Boxer actually is going to attack move now into Tage's natural. Starting to siege up Tage and trying Mana to break. Mules. Oh, he was trying to break the siege line, but no. <laughs> GG. <laughs> and the Emperor taking out his student here in game one. Impressive play. Going for a mech oriented style. Neither player really able to scout the other uh, for a you know, quite a long time in that game, and Boxer just ended up having the better composition, he engaged better as well, and Tage just found himself further and further behind as the game went on.
looking quite happy right now? Uh, I would say so. Well, that's, that is that for our first game. And uh, next up, we're going to have ASD against Genius. Should be pretty exciting. I'm trying to like update my score. <laughs> Keep pressing tab for some reason. <laughs> You're actually using notepad on the computer. That's cheating. That's not cheating. I did that with pen and paper. Well, I'm just using notepad, man. Oh, I was old school. Well, today, you know, today we have so many players. We've got six players in 15 games. I figured that I should definitely use a very organized, you know, <laughs> score table. Look, I even have the match results thing there. I get the greater sign there to boxer. Fits well. Oh, not quite. Almost fits all on one screen, but this is beautiful. Yeah, I've, I've been, you know, I was working hard trying to figure that stuff out. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next game is going to be uh, Protoss versus Protoss. Yeah. Is that correct? Or no, ASD nope. versus Genius. Karen. Okay. Yeah, ASD. Squirtle playing. not playing just yet. ASD, I think, one of the favorites to get out of this group, at least a lot of people seem to think so. He's been in Codex before, he's done really well in TBT. Genius is a guy who played really well. In the uh, in the code A, he actually played really poorly against July. Unfortunately, July was able to 2-0 him. But you know, otherwise, Genius did some interesting strategies going for carriers in one of his games in code A. And Genius is—he's been around a while. You never really know what to expect from Genius. That's what I always like to say about Genius: is you don't know what build he's going to do because he doesn't have a style. He might foregate you. You know, you just don't know. He might do a five gate all in even on Tottery Malter. He does that quite often. He may just go next as first. You just really don't know. So we have uh, both of them with the hot packs. I have to admit that I didn't use them before, but when he got so cold in Korea, I, at some one point I asked one of the players at the Gomas to give me one, and damn, those things are hot. That is awesome. Better I actually gloves. haven't tried one yet. I gotta, I gotta get one of those. I was trying to ladder earlier today, and it was just too cold. My hands couldn't move, so I had. <laughs> they I, was, are I don't really know what to good. do. They're I need really to get good. some of those pads. And yeah. apparently they stay uh, that hot for about five hours. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't know that before. Wow, I gotta buy some. Like immediately. Anyways, guys, our map is Daybreak, ASD versus Genius. Which one of these players will get their first win? Only one of them will make it out of this game. <laughs> that was like an awkward way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the GSL up and down matches with Wolf and Caldor. Don't go anywhere.